Hi. What I'm presenting here is my master's thesis in electronics engineering. Now the title of the thesis is Ray Tracing of Sparse Voxel Octrees on an FPGA. I'm going to explain to you what that means. It's all about drawing 3D images, like in computer games where you're navigating a three-dimensional world. Now let's say you want to draw a picture of this beautiful goat. The way that this works in most modern games is that you represent the surface of the goat using these triangles. And these triangles are kind of like flat sheets of paper and you can represent them by representing the three corners with coordinates. Now let's say you want to draw this goat from a certain angle. Uh, what you do is you figure out how these triangles should be positioned in relation to the screen. So if the triangle falls outside the screen, you just drop it. But if it falls inside, you position it uh, correctly and then you fill the content, the triangle, with the texture. Now in my thesis, I'm using voxel models. Now voxels are kind of like tiny little cubes or atoms, if you will. And you store these voxel models in something called an octree, uh, which I won't go into detail about. Now, with uh, voxels, you can, of course, represent the surface of the model, uh, but you can also represent the insides, which might not be useful in computer games, but is very useful in medical imaging, where you want to look at the inside of the body. Now, the way I'm drawing these models is using something called ray tracing. Now, ray tracing is, well, if you can imagine like laser beams shooting out of my eyes, you follow those beams and you see which point they hit. Now let's say that point is yellow. That means that the pixel represented by that ray should be yellow. It's a bit more complicated than that, but that's the gist of it anyway. Now there are two parts to this thesis. There's a hardware part and there's a software part. And I'll get to the hardware part in a bit. So, this is the software part of the thesis. I can use this software to draw a picture of a dragon using ray tracing of sparse voxel octrees. And as you can see, I can rotate the camera a bit. Uh, but it's very slow, and uh, the reason is it's not optimized for speed. It's, the code is as close to the hardware version as possible to make it easy to debug the hardware. And I can also demonstrate that the sparse box lock trees have a kind of built-in level of detail functionality where I can draw the same model uh, with less detail. To demonstrate that this technique can be used in combination with rasterization as it is used in games today, I can draw these two polygon models using the GPU on my laptop. And we will try to combine this image with the ray traced image we saw earlier. The way we do this is by using something called a depth buffer. So this is the ray trace image, and this is the depth buffer of that image. The point of the depth buffer is that the closer you are to the camera, the darker the pixel in the buffer is. So if we now draw the polygon model, and we draw the depth buffer for that model, you can see that the Buddha statue is darker than the bunny behind it. So by using these depth buffer, we can combine the ray traced image with the rasterized image, and the dragon will appear correctly in relation to the two other models. This software has a lot of other functions as well. It generates the octrees used by both the software and the hardware implementation. And it performs functions uh, of the algorithm, which I haven't had time to implement in hardware yet. As a final demonstration, I can show you that I can move the position of the light source to show you how the shadows interact with the dragon. I should note that this lighting and shadowing hasn't been implemented in hardware yet. For the hardware part of this thesis, what I'm doing is I'm implementing this technique on something called an FPGA, like the one I have on this board, right here. Now, an FPGA is kind of like the stem cells of uh, digital integrated circuits. 
they can be reconfigured to perform the task of any other integrated circuit. So when I upload my design to this FPGA here, it actually becomes a small GPU. After uploading my design, I will also upload a voxel model and some pre-calculated parameters to the memory on this board here. Now, when I've done that, I can send a start signal from my laptop and I'll draw a picture of the dragon on the display right here. I can also do some simple animation, which will show you how fast it's rendering these images. But as you can see, it's not quite that fast yet, but the reason is I'm actually loading all these pre-calculated parameters for every pixel on the screen, and that's taking a lot of time. And I've not had the time to implement the calculations of these parameters in hardware yet. To convince you that the FPGA is working on its own right now, I can actually disconnect the cables going to my laptop, and now the only cables running from the FPGA is the power cable and the display cable. Now, whether people will start using this technique for games in the future, I don't know for sure, but there are people in the industry who seems to think that this technique shows promise. For instance, John Carmack, who is the architect behind games like Wolfenstein, Doom, Quake, and Rage. Now, it might be that people will start implementing this technique on the general purpose processors on the GPU, especially in the beginning. But what I'm kind of arguing for is that if people start using this technique, it would actually make a lot of sense to have it on dedicated hardware on the GPU because it might really accelerate the speed and scale of the technique and it might not take that much space on the GPU because the design is actually quite simple.